you support. And I'll follow you right now. Crap. Both in Gomez and Good Luck, the court found that both the March 2020 and November 2020 prioritization scheme, termed by the court as no visa policy, was implemented pursuant to 1004 for arbitrary. Sir, could you tuck in the mic? I'm, I'm having a yes, little sir. trouble hearing you. The district court found that the department failed to account for the effect of those policies on diversity visa applicants and were premised on faulty interpretations of 1182F. The government today challenges those decisions. Permitted, they state that the, the government begins this challenge on an expansive reading of 22 U.S.C. 265A. They argue that this statute Donc gives the Secretary de David de limitless discretion to administer the State Department as they see fit. Therefore, the actions taken pursuant to that authority granted in the statute are unreviewable. But this expansive reading of 265.1 does not square with the statute. It clearly sets confines on the Secretary's administration of the Department to the laws of the United States as implemented by the INA. This reading also does not square with the basic presumption of review of APA cases. The government has offered no compelling reason here to create an exemption. What about consular non-reviewability? Yeah, this is this is all about issuance of visas by consular officers. The consular officer had denied your clients visas based on the proclamation, based on priorities, based on anything. No judicial review. There is no denial of visas. I'm sorry. There is no denial of visas. There is no determination by the state. Department of State to deny a visa before it by a consular officer. This case, Secretary of State does not have this case is all about denial of visas based on the government's view of 1182F and it's creating priorities. I would and for the life of me, I don't understand the district court's distinction between district court said, well, if the government had denied the visas, no judicial review. Correct. But in fact, they just didn't process the visas because they thought they were legally prohibited from issuing visas. That's correct. What is that other than a denial of a visa? Well, it's a it's a broad stroke preclusion of a finding of ineligibility, but that's not what a visa refusal is. A visa refusal, a decision by a consular officer at the time of application to refuse the visa. And then that's set forth in statute on how an application for a visa is made. Suppose an individual consular officer had denied a visa saying 1182F prohibits me from issuing. Unreviewable. I'm sorry. That would be unreviewable under under consular non-reviewability. That's correct. But that's not what happened. So if I had a client who brought a claim before this court saying that the 1182F refusal was in fact unlawful, this court would not have an authority to do that. But we're challenging an implementation of an executive order. And that's what's my challenge here, not the actual refusal of the visa. The only bite any of this has for your clients is that they didn't get visas. Well, they didn't get an opportunity to apply for a visa. They were precluded from processing of their visa application. That's really what it is. Which would have been denied based on 1182F. And that would be unreviewable. But there were some waivers in place, put in place, that would perhaps have given them the right to have a visa under that, under the implementation of PP10014 and both of PP9984 and the travel ban. So it's not necessary that they would not have a visa. Fair enough. But then the adjudication of whether or not the waiver applies would be unreviewable. As to the specific one. Right. Yeah. Right. 